Welcome to Networking Rx, a podcast devoted to helping business professionals like you enhance your networking skills in order to become more proficient giving and receiving quality business referrals and improving the overall quality of your life and the lives of those around you. The Networking Rx podcast is a production of AmSpirit Business Connections, an organization whose mission is to empower business success through networking. A few weeks ago, I was at church. Um, I've been to church since, but a few weeks ago, I was at church, and I'm trying to follow along with the uh, with the readings. And I realize every denomination is different. I'm Catholic, and they're they're all different. But there's a point where we're going through readings, and we're standing and going through readings. Um, it doesn't matter what it was, but there was a woman who was in the same pew area as I was and she kind of worked her way right in the middle of all this she kind of works her way down just to check what page we were on Um, it's uh, and again I don't know every religion is different Uh, uh, Catholicism uh, they have books and every year is different you have year A year B year C doesn't matter it was confusing and she was confused and she wanted to follow along and I guess I looked like I knew what I was doing. I don't always, but in that moment I did. And she kind of came down and she kind of peeked over like she was looking at my, uh, she like she was cheating on an exam or something like that to see what page I was on. Um, she kind of giggled under her breath and um, I, I smiled. I thought it was kind of funny. Um, but the reason I bring that up is, is that in that moment, and we really didn't even talk. We really didn't even talk. We just kind of smiled, and it was almost it was almost as if she said, hey, what page are you on? I showed her what page, um, like nothing verbal. Um, she smiled, a little bit embarrassed at me. I just gave her a quick little pat on the back like, hey, it's okay. And that was our exchange. And, you know, after, after services, after mass, um, we smiled at one another. We just had this connection, and it's just like, you know, where does it go from here? You know, I i don't even know her name. I don't even know her name um, and might not know her name ever, uh, and I don't know that it matters, but the point is is that there's this little connection that we had, just this little connection, and there was, there was meaning to it. Um, it certainly uplifted me. I don't want to say it made my day. Uh, it certainly made church. Um, I don't know that that's kind of a low bar, isn't it? Um, but the the point is, is that these little interactions are all around us. In someone sent me a copy of an article by Jancy Dunn. It's a New York Times article, and Jancy had a seven day happiness challenge, and day three was. Small talk has big benefits. And I, I, I've had this, and, I, and my encounter at church really got me thinking about it as I was preparing to record a podcast today. You know, what do, what do you talk about? That's always a struggle of podcasting is what are you going to talk about? You know, what's, what's relevant? And I do talk about small talk on here all the time. Not all the time, but it's a subject that comes up from time to time. And I do think small talk is, is really important and there's science behind it. But just what Jancy's article is, this New York Times article, and it's dated January 3rd, 2023. So it's a little dated, but I don't know that these concepts are, you know, it's it's not it's not pop culture. It's not, you know, it's not political events or anything like that. The, the, the shelf life of conversation about relationships are, you know, are relevant for years and years and years, especially when we're talking about just general concepts. And what the challenge is that uh, Jancy Dunn put forth was, she said, today's exercise is to talk to someone you, you don't know well, or to a total stranger, or both. That was the challenge. Um, and she started out the she started out her segment talking about, she goes walking in, in the neighborhood, and there is a, a little dog who barks at her when she sees her. And, you know, one day, the owner basically, you know, just said, 
Um, Petey gets upset when he sees people wearing hats. Um, and, you know, so the woman, you know, it's just, that was the exchange. You know, this, now the, now the, the author knows, Hey, I need to take off my hat and that'll just calm down the dog. It's just a, just a little tiny exchange. And so, you know, we have people around us all the time. And so here's this challenge in front of us, this minute challenge, if you will, uh, just to talk to a stranger or talk to somebody you don't know well. I am a self-proclaimed introvert. I think my family knows that. My wife knows that. Um, people are surprised at that because I run a networking organization, which is all about interactions and, and networking. And those, you know, those two things are are not mutually exclusive. Uh, um, you can be good at networking and be an introvert. All being an introvert is, is I just don't, you know, being around people for long periods of time is kind of draining to me. Other people, that's exciting. Oh, wow, I was at a party. I could do that all day. You know, for me, that's not the case. So I am an introvert, but I do try to take the time to strike up conversations with people for, I'm sorry. for really no other reason than just to just have a quick conversation, see how people are going, maybe lift their day. I'm not being calculating about it. I'm not trying to get a discount or anything like that. In a way, it sort of makes me feel better um, and maybe makes the other person feel better as well. You know, just kid. You know, if you if you know me, I kid around a lot and, you know, I'll be checking out at the grocery store, drive my wife nuts. But I'll be, you know, I'll be kidding with the the person checking out, you know, hey, you know, it's talking about coupons. I'll make a joke. You know, it can be a whole lot of things. And there's, you know, there's something to that in in this article. Um, it talks about small talk can be awkward, but people tend to like us more than we presume. And, you know, research terms that the liking gap that we often think that our conversations um, are annoying to people. Um, and what they found is, is that after conversations, people tended to like you more than before the conversation. You know, and it's just, you know, my, you know, again, my wife or my kids might say, you know, you know, like, hey, come on, leave the person alone. They don't care. You know, they don't care about, you know, whatever coupon or whatever. They don't care. And the reality is, is, you know what, they don't care, but they appreciate the interaction. And it's not necessarily I'm giving them a compliment or anything like that, but it's just acknowledging that somebody is there. Um, and often we don't enter into these conversations because we're afraid of being rejected. And there was, uh, and th this, uh, this particular article references lots of different studies and lots of conversations with academic types. And there was a senior lecturer uh, in psychology, the psychology of kindness at the University of Sussex, um, and talked about people don't want to have conversations because they're afraid of being rejected. And the quote was, I ask people who say they were, reject, re, were rejected, how do you know you were rejected? If someone's looking at their watch, it could be because they're not interested, but it could also be because they're meeting someone in 10 minutes and they need to keep an eye on the clock. You know, so we tell ourselves these stories that, okay, they're not interested looking over their shoulder. You know, we don't know what's going on in people's lives. Uh, and I, we can't necessarily presume we can't necessarily presume that it's it's personal towards us. It might be that they had a bad day. It might be that they do, you know, have something coming up and just don't want to say something about it. Uh, I think it's always helpful if we're that person and you know we're going to be checking our watch to let somebody know. It's like, listen, uh, I'm expecting somebody to be here in 10 minutes, and I just want to make sure that I keep an eye out for them. You know, so I'm checking my watch. I'm checking the door. So when they walk in, they don't know anybody. I want to make them feel welcome just to kind of explain it away. Um, but that's that's when we're on that end of it. But we're not always on that end of it. We're not always on the end of, 
You know, we might be the person seeing somebody checking their watch. Um, and even if they reject you, we, when you deal with a total stranger or someone you don't know well, what are you out? You're really out nothing, certainly with a total stranger. Now, they may go tell people, yeah, I talked to this crazy person. Or this crazy person stopped me, said I was checking people out at the grocery store, just doing my job. And this person was just having a polite little chit chat with me. So annoying. You know what? I doubt that happens. And if it does, so what? It almost says more about that person than it does you or me. So I tend to have those conversations. I think people want to know that other people are interested in them. I like when people are interested in me. People want to know, you know, hey, where did you get that? You know, you always seem to have a smile on your face. What good's happening? You know, it's whatever it might be. Or, you know, you seem down. Are you okay? You know, I think people, people, people want to be cared for. They want to be cared for people that are close to them, but it's also nice to be cared for people who are total strangers or people who don't know you that well. The other benefit that uh, they talk about in this little article, and they're talking about these minute conversations, and that's, that's the challenge. Just have this minute conversation a couple times a day to say hello to somebody. And some of us aren't necessarily in those circles, but if you go out and you go for a walk, you're going to run into people, and there's nothing... There's no harm in just smiling and saying hello and maybe seeing where it goes. You know, it talks in here about that we can learn from these interactions, you know, just have little conversations as to, you know, what's going on. I was watching a YouTube video. A guy had moved to Mexico and he was shocked to see that there were a lot of license plates from South Dakota. It's just kind of interesting to him. Why is it? You know, I drive all over the United States. I won't see anybody with the South Dakota license plates. There's less than a million people in the state. But I go to Mexico and they're everywhere. You know, so we had a quick conversation with somebody and found out there's a reason why. You know, it has to do with insurance. It has to do with taxes. Um, you know, you know, he w wouldn't have known but for that conversation of just having a polite little conversation with a total stranger that he'll never run into again. And so we learn little things at, when we're having these little conversations, you know, but whatever it might be. I remember being at the grocery store saying, you know, I can't, I can't find this particular item. And somebody showed me just, a, you know, just a little polite conversation. I, I, well, I was just, I kind of just mentioned, oh boy, this is crazy. You know, I went, I went I'm on, got my phone. I'm looking online where to find this particular, this particular spice I wanted. Um, and it's, you know, the, the, the website says it's in the store. You know, there are 20 in stock. I just have to find where this one little spice is on the shelf. I'm in the right aisle, you know, but you know, that's, that's just pointing, okay, this is this is the haystack. Good luck finding the needle. And I just made a mention to somebody and she said, oh, you know, and she looked at the phone and she pointed and then she showed me the number. This is what you need to look for. Oh my gosh, 30 seconds later, I'm exactly where I need to be. And it was just this little minute conversation. So take the challenge. Take the challenge. Just talk to somebody. Nice little conversation. You know, love that sweatshirt. Did you go there? You know, those earrings are great. You know, baby's cute, whatever. And see what comes of it. See what comes of it. In time, you kind of get acclimated to these sorts of things. And this sort of networking doesn't necessarily, you know, is a client going to come from this? I don't know. I don't know. You know, is the, your, your next best employee going to come from it? I don't know. But I do know this. If you're not willing to have this little conversation, the answer is it'll never happen. It'll never happen. But in the meantime, while you have these little conversations, know that you're uplifting somebody else and it's probably going to be uplifting to you too. Thanks for joining us on the Networking Rx podcast. Please put what you've learned into action today and let us know if you have questions, comments, or ideas for future topics. You can email them to us at podcast at amspirit.com. That's A-M-S-P-I-R-I-T dot com. 
Finally, so you never miss an episode, be sure to subscribe to the Networking Rx podcast through iTunes, Overcast, or however you receive your podcasts. Now get out and network with someone. The Networking Rx podcast is the copyright production of Amspirit Business Connection. All rights reserved.